Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Frozen Fractal, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can make a professional looking logo for your YouTube channel. Obviously, you can use this logo for other platforms as well, like Instagram or Twitter, but in this video, I'm going to be focusing on making a logo for your YouTube channel. Alright, so first things first, you're going to want to go to Pixlr.com. Then, you're going to want to click on Pixlr Editor. Now you're going to want to click on Create New. Then, we can give our logo a name. Then, for the width and height, I'm going to set 2000 by 2000. This should make your logo high quality enough for most platforms. The background we're going to leave off, and then we're going to click on Create. Alright, so now we're going to start creating our logo. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make a logo based off of a letter. A lot of people use this format because it looks really good, and it's really easy to make. Alright, so first you're going to want to visit thefont.com. This is basically a website where you can download free fonts, which you can then use for your logo. Alternatively, you can use one of the free fonts provided with Pixlr. Now you can basically search through all of these different categories and find a font you like. Alright, so I think this one looks pretty cool. So I'm going to click on download. Then drag the zip file onto my desktop. Right click it. And click on extract here. Then go back to Pixlr. Click on the text tool. Add a new text layer into your file. Then type in whatever letter you want to use for your channel. For this tutorial, I'm just going to go with S, then select it, maybe increase the size a little bit, and change the color to white for now. Then go to the font section, click on add local font, and then find the file that ends with .ttf. Select it, and click on open. And now your font is imported into Pixlr. Now we're going to want to resize the letter accordingly. So click on it, and then adjust the size to your liking. Then center the image like so. As you can see, the letter doesn't always look centered, even if Pixlr says it is. So if it doesn't look quite right, I would simply manually center it. Now I'm going to be showing you two different methods for how you can make your logo stand out. First, I'm going to be showing you an overlay method. So you're going to want to go to Google and search for some kind of a background. I often like to use galaxy backgrounds for my logos. Make sure to choose an image that has a large enough dimension size. This one, for instance, if you hover over the image, is only 540 by 360 pixels, which isn't quite large enough for what we want to do. This image right here is more than large enough, so I'm going to save this image by right-clicking it and clicking on Save, and then by either dragging it from your desktop or from the download section, simply drag it into your file, and then click on Add Current. Now we have the image in our project. You may need to resize the image depending on how large it is. Then drag it beneath the logo. Now we're going to recreate this font with this galaxy background right here. First, select the letter, then click on the magic wand tool, select the letter, right click, click on invert selection, then click on the background, click on edit, and then click on cut. Now, if you drag the background above the letter, you can see we have the letter, but now with a galaxy background. You can click right here on this eye next to the logo in order to make it disappear. And now we have a nice, clean galaxy version of our logo. Now, you can either continue this tutorial with this galaxy background version, or 
with a plain white texture. I think both versions can make a really good logo, but you can decide which one you want to use. For this tutorial, I'm going to be going with the plain white version. Now, the next step in creating a logo is getting a background. I am going to be using a galaxy background again, but you can choose whatever you want. Maybe a forest landscape or something else. Alright, this looks pretty good, so I'm going to right click and save the image. And then again, simply drag it into our project. And click on add current. Then resize it to fit the image. And then drag the letter above the background. I'm going to increase the size of the letter just slightly, clicking on the text tool and then on the size. And then recentering it. Alright, so since our logo is white and very bright, we're going to want to create contrast by darkening the background. So select the background, click on Adjustments, and then click on Hue and Saturation. First of all, we're going to want to colorize the background. Then we can shift the hue to whatever color we want. I think this color looks pretty cool, and I'm going to increase the saturation. And then hit Apply. Next, go to Adjustment again, and then on Brightness and Contrast. We're going to increase the contrast slightly, and then slightly decrease the brightness. I think this looks pretty good, so we're going to move on to the actual letter here. So first things first, we're going to want to add an outline to the letter to make it stand out from the background. So select it, click on the text tool, then go to styles, and activate outline. Then for the color, I think we're just going to go with black, and then change the outline size to your liking. Then, underneath the outline, we're also going to add a drop shadow. Alright, so now we've done all we want to do with the text tool, so now we're going to rasterize this layer so we can add some more effects here. We're going to right-click it, and then click on Rasterize Layer. Now it's no longer text, but a solid image. Now we're going to add some more filters to the logo to make it look a little bit better. First, go to Filter, then go to Details, and then click on Add Noise. This will add some texture to your logo. And then click Apply. I think I want to increase the brightness of the letter just a little bit. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of a stronger drop shadow. So click on Filter, Drop Shadow, and then change the settings to your liking. I think the background still needs some work, so I'm going to select it, click on Adjustment, and then click on Posterize. Set the colors value all the way to 30, and then slowly decrease it. As you can see, this adds a kind of painted aesthetic to the background, which I think looks really cool. Once you're happy with it, click on Apply. Next, we're going to add a vignette to the background. So select it, click on Filter, and then click on Vignette. This adds a sort of shadow effect to the edges. And I think our logo is pretty much done. You can export it now by going to File, then Export, and then Quick Export Image as PNG. But I'm going to show you a couple more cool effects that you can use to make your logo look even cooler. First, we're going to add a sort of glitch effect to the letter. So select the letter, go to Filter, and then go to Glitches, and then Fringe. As you can see, increasing this value sort of splits the RGB values of the image and creates this sort of red, yellow, blue glitch effect, which I think looks pretty cool. Another version of this is the RGB split. Another cool idea is to select the background, click on Filter, Details, and then give it a Gaussian Blur, which can make your letter stand out even more. If you want to make your logo more cohesive, you can select both of these images here by selecting one, and then holding down the Shift key and selecting the other, then go to Layer, and then click on Merge Visible. Now you want to unlock this image in order to add some more effects to it. 
Now that everything is one image, we can add some pretty cool effects to it. Select it, click on Filter, then go to Glitches, and then select Fringe. Now the Fringe effect is applied to the entire image, which I think looks really cool. Another cool effect is going to Filter, Glitches, and then Scan Lines, increasing the amount and adjusting the size. And then you get a cool little scan line effect, which could be pretty cool. You can also go to Filter and Bloom to increase the vibrance or brightness of your logo. If you want to give your image a vintage aesthetic, you can go to Filter, Details, and Add Noise. And then increase the amount. This kind of adds a old vintage aesthetic. Depending on what you're going for, this could look pretty cool. I'm going to add a small amount to my image. Alright, so I think I'm happy with my logo. So I'm going to go to File, Export, and Quick Export Image as PNG. And there you have it! A completely free, professional looking logo made entirely within Pixlr. Honestly, I'm really happy with how this turned out. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of logos you guys make. Alright, but that's gonna be it. If this video helped you, consider leaving a like and subscribing. It really helps out the channel. But for now, stay safe, and I will see you in the next video. See ya!